everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Hello guys, how are you? By the way, this is Mark and welcome back again here on your YouTube channel, Happy TV. So this is the part 2 or the continuation of our Gaffish crossbreeding tips and techniques. And we are already in best ways to make Gaffy Fry grow faster. So first, keep stable warm temperature. Gaffys can live in waters with temperatures between 65 to 85 Fahrenheit or 18 to 30 degrees Celsius. However, for optimal growth and health, I recommend keeping and raising guppies in water with temperature 75 to 85 Fahrenheit or 24 to 30 degrees Celsius. Because warm water increases fry metabolism and stimulates growth. And this time, if you are in cold countries, you may use heat heater for your fry. As well, you can see I place my grow outside in direct sunlight, but you have to be careful that the water temperature will not exceed on the given measure. Raise the fry separately. Do not mix gaffy fry with your adult's parents. Raise them separately in a grow out tank. Adults won't stress them out and they won't need to hide from bigger fish. Raising them separately will reduce stress and competition for the food and will also help with growth rate. Thoughts are overtaken, I got patience One day at a time is how you operate a cadence A flow, you grow, you show yourself a foundation Stay away from all the shit that causes temptation I know that I like to do it cause of sensation I live my life in my head like a narration Don't expect greatness, do my best, man, I'll take it Separate fry by size It is also a good idea to separate the fry by size and different age broths Bigger fry are more agile and will eat more. The tendency is that the bigger ones will get even bigger and the smaller fry will remain smaller. <laughs> While raising the fry in a grow out tank can add a lot to the growth rate. Raising each bus separately is even better. Separate fry by gender. Separate the fry by gender is a must if you want to grow your gaffish faster. This is not an option right now from the beginning because it is impossible to tell the gender of a one week old gaffy fry. But as the fry grow, you will be able to sex them easily and relocate them into other tanks where females and males are kept separately. When you reach 20 days to 1 month old, you need to separate the male from female because if there are female guppies present in the tank, the males will just breed and breed and don't even bother and mind of eating and this will make them waste so much energy and will not make them reach their full body potential, especially for show guppies. <laughs> Set a goal you control and the steps you take them I try to pick one thought, have some concentration And if I make a mistake, it's called education I try to do this every day, call it replication Give them enough space Personally, I recommend 0.5 to 1 gallon to 2 to 4 liter of water um, volume per gaffy fry While the fry are younger up to one month old, half a gallon of water per fry is enough. For fry that are older than one month, I recommend one gallon per fish. Life ain't easy, yo. I think there's a reason, though. Ups and downs, just like every different season, yo. Sometimes I'm high, other times I'm barely breathing, though. I always gotta fight and hide from the demons, yo. Negative thoughts are poison, they rot. Uh. Head full of flowers, so here come the clouds. Uh. Don't ever stop unless I can swap All the bad for the good in my head when I'm lost uh. Feed them with variety of foods Feed the fry small amount 4 to 6 times a day with a high quality and varied food that they can consume within 5 minutes I prefer to feed the live homemade food instead of commercial fish food I understand that not everyone can cultivate their own live food or can't prepare the food for their fish in this case, you can choose commercially available food if you do so only buy premium food from well-known brands 
and for live birds you can give them like the brine shrimp, culture dapia, bloodworms, and etc. And for me, I'm using Max Gold with high protein fish food here, also high in minerals, especially in carotenoids. This is what I'm using for my gaff fish, and if you want to buy it, um, it's available in Shopee, or you can click the link below the description. Perform 50% weekly water changes. It is very important to do regular maintenance your fish tank and do weekly water changes. This is the best way to remove the toxins that are accumulating the water throughout the week. And if you're feeding your fry heavily for 2 to 6 times a day, waste and toxins will accumulate much faster. In this case, you need to clean your tank and 50% water change weekly. Set your affirmations, aspirations. I got shit to do the aftermath of preparation. Good food, good mood, blood in circulation. One step at a time, yeah, that's how you make it. Set a goal you control and the steps you take them. I try to pick one thought, have some concentration. And if I make a mistake, it's called education. I try to do this every day, call it replication. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Filter and maintenance and gravel vacuuming. If you keep bare bottom tanks, the waste is very visible at the bottom of the tank. The substrate will hide all the fish waste, and if you don't see the waste, it does not mean it's not there. It's there under the gravel, <laughs> and it's polluting your water. It's very important to perform regular gravel vacuuming. And also, it's very important to clean the filter on a regular basis because filter can be also a great source of pollution for your aquarium at least once a month. And be very careful on cleaning them. Just clean the filter with tank water not to get rid of good bacteria. Reduce water flow. Gavi fry are sensitive. Swimming against strong water currents will make them consume a lot of energy and eventually exhaust them. Do not use powerful internal or external filler, instead use a simple sponge filter. An air-driven sponge filter will provide just enough water movement but not a strong flow. Add live plants. I see many guppy breeders use bare bottom tanks with no aquarium plants. From my experience, adding plants to your breeding and outgrow guppy tank is also a contribution to growth and health. Nitrites are the final product of fish waste, which is in high quantities is toxic to your fish. Live plants will consume nitrates from the water columns, purifying the water. On the other hand, plants can provide surface area from microorganisms and algae to grow. Gaffer fry will graze on plants all day long and will eat anything they see. This is a great way to extend the feeding period of the fish. Best plants to keep in a gaffer fry tank is java moss, guppy grass, and bakupa and balisneria as what we have here and other low tank plants. These plants are very easy to care for and do not require special lights nor fertilizers. Set a goal you control and the steps you take them. I try to pick one thought, have some concentration. And if I make a mistake, it's called education. I try to do this every day, call it replication. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Life ain't easy, y'all. I think there's a reason, though. 
ups and downs, just like every different season, yo. Sometimes I'm high, other times I'm barely breathing, yo. I always gotta fight and hide from the demons, yo. Negative thoughts are poison they ride. Uh, head full of flowers, so here come the clock. Brigsenek should be away from hazardous chemicals. A tank in living room can be surrounded by hazards. Minimize the risk to your fish by knowing the chemicals that can be toxic to your fish. Today, somewhere in the world, someone will be looking at a tank full of dead garbage <laughs> and scratching their head unable to ascertain why. It might be something catastrophic that's happening in the tank. A crash of the filter or the result of a stock overzealous heater. A lot of mysterious deaths are never resolved. Because Habi has focused solely on what's going on in the tank and not what's happening around it. The problem is if you were not aware of the outside influences that can cause a wipeout. Incorrect use of treatments. Sometimes we cannot spot many ailments and diagnosis can be shaky at best. So if you're not sure, don't just reach for the medication as a matter of course. The more you use a medication, the less effective it will be, like using too much antibacterial or salt on your sick gaff fish and possible you may lead killing your fish. Find someone who knows about disease and listen to their professional recommendations and those accordingly. For me, I'm using one capsule of tetracycline per 6 gallons of water when treating fish and one tablespoon of salt per gallon of water. So thank you so much guys for watching this video. I'm hoping that this guide will help you on your garfish crossbreeding journey. And by the way, if this is your first time watching crossbreeding topic about garfish, and if you want more knowledge about it, then just watch our previous videos for more reference. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to get updated on upcoming videos like this one. And if you have any questions, clarifications regarding to our video here, just send your message at the comment section below or follow us on every page at habitv.ph and to my Instagram account at markroyce87. I'll do my best to answer all your questions there. Thank you very much and stay safe everyone. To God be the glory. Bye bye.